Right, hello everyone. So today's talk is titled Angular Augury, Look Deeply Into Your App. My name is Igor. I'm one of the engineering directors at Triangle.io, and Angular Augury is one of the projects that I manage there. So some of you might already know what Augury is. You might have used it already. Uh, but for uh, some of you that don't know yet, I'm going to define what it is. So first of all, Augury is an Angular 2 development aid. It's uh, primarily perceived on our end as an introspection tool and a visualization tool of your Angular 2 applications at runtime. And the whole purpose is to give you an additional insight um, of your application uh, while it's running. So that's why we don't necessarily see uh, Augury as a debugger. Again, it's primarily a visualization tool that will help you um, see certain aspects of your application while it's running and not have to have the uh, mental energy of keeping it all in your head. Uh, we do believe that it will lead to uh, better applications as a result and more optimized applications and, of course, uh, less buggy applications as well. So it could be used to address problems with your apps. So uh, Augury is a Chrome extension, and it's an open source effort that was started at Wrangle.io. So let's go briefly into the past. Um, Angular Connect is a very special conference for us at Wrangle, especially for me. That's where we presented the prototype of Augury uh, last year, almost a year ago. As you can see, it looked pretty basic. This is something that me and my colleague Bertrand uh, wrote in a couple of weeks. Uh, at the time, it was running on Angular Alpha, and it looked pretty ugly, as you can tell. Um, and basically, the concept was to show that even at the time, we could do some things on that space with Angular 2. Now fast forward a few months into the future and we released a beta version of Augury at Angular Connect. Um, hopefully you can see that it looks much better. Uh, people that worked on it are were definitely better at design than myself and probably at coding, but don't tell them that. Um, so we moved quite uh, far after that. We added features and the tool uh, became a lot more usable at the time. All right, so at this point you might be wondering why do I need Augury? I know Angular 2 so well. I'm an awesome Angular 2 developer. I know JavaScript inside and out. I have my uh, debugging tools in the browser and I have my console log, so why do we need Augury? So I'm gonna give you a simple um, use case of how Augury could potentially be helpful. So let's say you're writing a new application. Uh, things start small at first. You have one component. Each component has an injector. You have a couple of components, you start adding things, and usually the complexity grows pretty quickly. Uh, you have a lot of components in your application, you start bringing in dependencies. Um, dependencies might come from different layers and different levels of your component tree, and so on and so forth. You start adding things, and eventually this is what you have in your mind. Now this is only hierarchical injection. There is also routing and navigation to keep track of, there is change detection, and in short, hashtag web tracing framework. Like uh, my colleague Vanessa likes to say, this joke was for you, Vanessa, if you're watching. All right, so now we have Augury, and that will allow us to look deeper into our applications. Uh, with this tool, you can visualize the relationships between your component. You can see detailed information about your component at runtime. You can modify your component st state at runtime. You can reason about your dependency hierarchy without having a whole mental map in your head of how your application is wired. There's also routing structures and much more. Okay, so I talked about a lot of our features and I think right now it's best that I uh, demo some of them. So for the first half of the demo, I'm gonna use an application that we call the kitchen sink. It's available on augury.angular.io slash demo. Essentially, it's a contrived collection of little Angular 2 apps that we use for testing Augury as well as demoing some of its features. So I guess the first feature I'm gonna demo is the awesome dark mode, minus the little bug there. But other than that, uh, you can see right away that you can visualize the component tree of your application. As you hover over the tree, you will get your components highlighted on the front end as well. So you can already gauge what the structure of application is. There is also other views that you can see. Uh, you can only see the components that you have created, or you can see a deeper HTML structure 
uh, or for your application together with your components as well. But I'm going to use the hybrid view, which is the sensible default that um, is most useful. Um, also, as your application changes the runtime, you get the changes highlighted. We diff the trees between um, the iterations, and we uh, highlight it on the UI. And I'm going to select one of the components, and we're going to look. First of all, we can see the change detection, of course. Uh, but I think one of the more useful uh, pieces of it is the state portion. You might be wondering what state is, and uh, probably the best way to showcase it is by clicking this view source link, which will bring me straight into their source code. And right away, you can see that the state of your component is essentially your instance variables on the component's backing class. So all of these are available for you here. You get the labels of inputs and outputs as well. And this state is editable. So I can go and I can change the size of the pixels here at runtime without having to go and modify the code. I can change it to black and so on. I can also modify complex objects that I have here. Um, yeah. So another feature that I'm going to showcase is shown by this little counter application. And um, again, you have inputs, and again, those are modifiable, but we've seen that. So what I want to show is the output. In this case, the result is an event emitter uh, configured on this component. The parent component here listens to this event, and I can emit this event uh, right from Augury without uh, having to do anything. So it updated on the UI as well. Now, I don't necessarily need to emit only primitives. I can emit inline uh, JavaScript objects as well. Another feature that I've kind of alluded to in some of the previous slide is the uh, dependency injection tree, which you can visualize. So um, here we have a, a small hierarchy of components. And what we have is something that we call the injection graph. Um, I'm going to expand this to see a little bit more. Basically, it shows you the dependency injection hierarchy of the specific component. You can see which uh, component instantiated which services and also um, that the component references services from a different layer in the hierarchy, like in this case, component one has a reference to service three, which has been instantiated at the root of the application. There's also keyboard shortcuts that you can use to navigate this, so you can kind of jump between the components. Um, another feature is um, related to the dependency injection is we list all the dependencies that your components have, and if you click that, you can see all the components in your app that use uh, the same dependency. And you can click a specific component, and uh, it would select it on the UI. All right, um, another feature that we think would be useful as well is our router tree diagram, so you can visualize the routing structure of your application. You can see the auxiliary routes there as well. Oh, and by the way, both the router tree and the component tree are searchable, so you can search both of them. And the final thing, if you're curious a bit more about the Angular internals, is something that uh, we hint at here. It's called $A. Essentially, whichever component you have selected at the UI, uh, you can just do $A on a console, and it will give you the debug element instance behind the specific component so you can query it on the console. It's similar to ng.probe, if some of you are familiar with that. All right, so that's great, a collection of a bunch of examples. But for the second part of the demo, I'm going to try to do something a little bit more real world. So first of all, at Triangle, we're big fans of obscure superheroes. And personally, I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket. So in case our main business model doesn't work out, we can always rely on superhero Tinder to give us additional revenue available in App Store at the end of the month. So let's try to use Augury and see what kind of information we can get from this, uh, about this application. All right, so it's a pretty small application still. I have my component tree. Um, in this case, the home component actually references the router that uh, Victor was talking about behind me. So if you want to look at some of the internals behind it, you can um, kind of look at it right away from Augury as well. And then there is the start component. Again, I have my inputs. I have my outputs. Um, the count variable here will make sense uh, shortly as I go through this demo. But let's you know, go ahead and get matching. All right, so I'm far away from home, and I miss my wife. I'm a little bit lonely, so I'm just going to swipe right all the time, essentially. Um, I think Barney would be a great match for me. So, okay, it's a match. Um, 
So let's look at the game component here, for example. First of all, we can see that uh, this component tracks some state that we have. Um, count is one out of five, so it's basically five matches that I have to go through. And there is a game service which seems to be like a stateful service. Again, I can see the character array backing the matches that I'm going to be presented with, and I can see that Barney likes me back, as I've seen by the match from before. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do more matches. Notice also that the properties pane highlights the, the changes that are occurring as you, as you move. So it will allow you to uh, optimize your application if something is potentially wrong with your change detection or something like that. So I had a few matches here. So now I want to uh, see my results and see who I was matched with. Oh, it says I have no matches, which is weird because I did get some. So clearly there is a problem. I obviously did not anticipate that happening. So let's try and observe the state and see what's happening there. So I'm going to look at my game service, and I see that it's actually empty, that there was some state there before, but I don't see anything. I also see that the game service appears in the providers for this component, uh, which is strange, because uh, this is something um, that doesn't make sense, hierarchically speaking, for that component. So right away, I can kind of see that maybe something is wrong with the wiring here. Um, and if I look at the in injection graph, I can see that I have two instances of game service, one coming from the root of my application and one defined for the summary component. So most likely, the problem lies there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fix the bug. And I'm going to reload the application. And we'll see what's, how the bug has been addressed. Now. So I'm, I'm reloading the application, but here's the thing. I don't want to go through all five of the matches, right? I just want to test that my uh, fix is working. So you can use Augury to aid in that as well without having to modify any source code. Like in this case, I can modify the count parameter to be two, and I don't have to go through five matches to test my solution anymore. So I'm going to go and do get matching. Um, there is one match. There is another. And now I can see that everything works. So this is one of the examples of how you could use Augury to reason about your applications and how Augury could actually speed uh, your uh, thinking process and help you address some of the problems. All right, so back to the slides. So first of all, under the hood. Augury is just another Angular 2 application. It's written in TypeScript, and it's really not that different from any other Angular 2 applications that you are writing or will write in the future. The only real difference is that it runs in the Chrome uh, extension space. So it uses Chrome extension APIs, and it relies on Angular 2 debug APIs. The main architecture is uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, we have two decoupled components, which we refer to as the back end and the front end. We inject a script into your application, and we see how it uh, changes and send those messages to the front end. Um, if you just look at the um, UI, uh, the front, uh, front end portion of the tool, um, you'll, you'll find it quite simple. Again, it's not as, as complicated. We have detailed architectural documentation available on our repo. As a matter of fact, like the biggest, the biggest problem that we've encountered was not necessarily getting the information out of the Angular 2, but getting it in a performant way, because we are injecting uh, stuff into your application to, to get that. Also, Augury is actually not as big as you think. It's about 5,500 lines of um, TypeScript a sprinkle of CSS and HTML. So if you want to learn the code base, it has pretty small footprint. Most likely, the projects that you're working on are bigger than Augury uh, already. And I guess it's worth talking about the roadmap at this point. So in the past several weeks and months, our main focus was to ensure that we work with the latest version of Angular. Uh, we supported the betas as soon as they were coming out. We were supporting the release candidates almost as soon as they were coming out. And now we support the final version of Angular 2. Uh, so you can use Augury with the latest Angular. Um, another thing that was our big focus in the past couple of months is to make sure that Augury works on a large scale applications with lots and lots and lots of components. Um, really, the biggest, uh, the most complex part of Augury was to ensuring that it performs well. And that's what we focused on the past several months, and we've uh, achieved that. So it should work on very large applications in a very efficient manner. Having said that, it did come at the expense of us having some issues with the tool that we could not address in time. And our focus in the next several weeks and months is to make sure that we do address these and that everyone has a stable 
uh, working product. It works in all kinds of scenarios. We also did some investigation into uh, support for native platforms, and we're planning to get back on track with that. We want to see if we can uh, have a story in that space as well, and hopefully help uh, people debug uh, applications written targeted at native platforms as well. And as usual, we are a feedback-focused company, and uh, Augury is no exception. So we want to gather more feedback from the community and improve the tool for you guys and ourselves as well. All right, so speaking about feedback, uh, we have something that's called usability survey, which I would encourage everyone to go and uh, fill in. It's a pretty short survey, but the insight that we can get out of it is invaluable for us. You can uh, find that survey at augury.angular.io slash feedback. But if you have Augury installed and you don't want to remember um, the URL, again, we're trying to free your mind. You can just click here and uh, find the same uh, survey by going to this link. All right, so again, Augury is an open source effort that we're building for the Angular community. Um, all kinds of contributions are welcome. Reaching out to us on Slack, opening GitHub issues, reviews on Chrome Web Store, everything is welcome. But the most welcome contributions are, of course, PRs. Uh, we have some issues labeled as help wanted. Those are probably good uh, issues to get started with if you want to get up to speed. But you can pick and work on anything, or you can create your own. We're uh, very welcoming to that. So we would love to see more contributions from the community. And last, but most definitely not least, the way we work on Augury is uh, different people, uh, when they are between projects, are able to uh, volunteer from our company and spend some time working on the tool. The people above here are the ones that have worked on Augury in the past year. They're the ones that took over mine and Bertrand's work on the prototype and really made it into a much more mature product that we have these days. And it would not be possible without the contributions from those people uh, to make the tool uh, a reality. Uh, finally, uh, Augury is available in the Chrome Web Store. I encourage everyone to go and download and play around with it, give us feedback. If you haven't done so already, we're releasing versions every few weeks, sometimes every week. Um, so it's constantly changing and evolving. And again, your feedback would be most appreciated on that. And finally, it's been a pleasure presenting the tool to all of you. And thank you for having me. And that's it.